Welcome to my lecture online. Here's our second example of how to solve an opera operational amplifier circuit. And again, what we do is we take the circuit from the time domain into the frequency domain to make it easier to solve it. But essentially what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the output voltage relative to ground and the current, the output current of the operational amplifier. So how do we do that? Well, you can see I've already drawn the currents in there that we're going to keep track of. We have two junctions. We have the junction over here, the junction over there. We'll call the voltage at that point V1 and the voltage at this point V2 and the same over here. But notice how things are connected. V2 is connected to the op amp. The positive terminal and the negative terminal, the difference between the voltage here is essentially zero. And notice that the negative terminal is connected to the output voltage. That means that V2 and the output voltage are at the same potential. So that I made a note of that over here, that V2 is at the same potential as the output voltage. All right, we're going to take a look at those two junctions and set up an equation because we realize that the current into the junction must equal to all the currents leaving the junction. So in this case, I1 must equal I2 plus I3. So I1 is going to be the voltage difference between the source voltage and V1. So better yet, over here. So V source minus V1 and divided by the impedance in between, which is 10K. And that equals I2. I2, that will be the difference between V1 and V out. So V1 minus the output voltage divided by the impedance in between. Of course, over here we have a minus J20K. And uh, notice, yeah, and I didn't mention, of course, that in this case our frequency was 5,000. So to find the impedance of the capacitors, it would be 1 over 5,000 times the capacitance, which are given in terms of nanofarads over here. For the third current, that's the current from there to there, that would be uh, V1 minus V2. Now V2 is the same as the output voltage, so we can go ahead and change this to the output voltage divided by the resistance in between, which is 20K. And of course, this is a plus, not equals, 20K. So here we have our first equation. Now we need to find our second equation using the second junction. For I3, that's the same as I3 over here. So that would be V1 minus VO divided by 20K equals I5. I5 is the current coming down this way. It would be V2 to ground. Now V2 is equal to the output voltage. So it would be V output minus ground divided by, and over here, that would be a minus J10K. To get rid of the denominators, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation of both equations by 20K. So we're going to multiply, did I say divide? I meant to say multiply by 20K, and do the same over here, multiply by 20K, and that gets rid of all the denominators. So over here, we get two times the source voltage minus two times V1 is equal to, here we get uh, V1 minus V output divided by, we still have the minus J, uh, but we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by J. J times J is J squared. J squared times the negative, of course, that cancels. And so the whole thing in the denominator cancels when we do that. Over here, we have, this is equal to plus V1 minus V output. Over here, we have V1 minus V output is equal to, here, notice that minus zero disappears. That would be two times V output divided by, we still have a minus J, but again, we'll multiply both the top and the bottom by J. J times J is negative one times a negative one, that cancels out. Let's finish this over here. Let's bring the V output over there. So V1 is equal to V output plus J2 V output. Or we could simply say one plus J2 V output. So here we have a relationship now between V1 and the output voltage. There we go. That we're going to need, of course, in this equation to get rid of the V1. All right, V source is 12. We have it over there as well, 12. So twice that is 24. So we get 24 minus 2 V1 is equal to V 
1, oh, that's multiplied times j, isn't it? Got to be careful here. So let me see carefully here. Uh, we have, um, I'm going to take this one first, v1 minus v output. And over here we have minus or plus JV1 and minus JV0. Putting all the V1s over this side. Yes, let's see here. Yeah, let me combine all the V1. So we have 24 is equal to, bring this to V1 over here, that gives me 3 V1. So it gives me 3 plus J V1. That takes care of all the V1s. On the V0s, I have a negative here, so minus 1 plus J V0. Okay, we got to be very careful about the negative signs and all that. Over here, we have V1 is equal to this. So now we can make the substitution. So we have 24 is equal to um, 3 plus J. But instead of V1, I'm going to write 1 plus J2 V0 minus 1 plus J V0. And now we need to multiply this. So we get 24 is equal to 3 times 1, that gives me 3. j times j2, that's uh, j times j is j squared, that's negative 1 times 2, it's negative 2, times v0. We have a 3 times 2, which is 6, and a 1 that would be plus j7, v0, minus v0, and minus j, v0. Now we have 3 minus 2, minus 1, that's minus 3 minus 3, which is 0. So essentially we get 24 is equal to 0 V0. And J7 minus J, that is plus J6 V0. So this portion disappears. And now we end up with V0 is equal to 24 divided by J6, which is 24 divided by 6 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. That means that V0 is equal to 24 divided by 6, which is 4, with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. All right. Now, since we have that, we can convert that back to the output voltage in the time domain, which means that V output is equal to 4 times the cosine of 5,000 T minus 90 degrees. Of course, the cosine minus 90 degrees is the same as the sine. So essentially, we could also say that the output voltage is equal to 4 times the sine of 5000 T, if you want to write it in more compact format, and of course, in volts. So either way, that would give us the correct answer. I think my black pen is dying on me. Let me get me a different black pen. So that gives us the output voltage, which means we already solved for that. Now the output current. How do we find that? Well, notice here that the output current is in the opposite direction as I2. I2 goes this way, and I output goes this way. So they're in opposite directions. So we could essentially say that I output is equal to negative I2. That's true, then we come back here, we have I2. So we can say that I2 is equal to V1 minus output voltage, V1 minus the output voltage divided by minus J20K. Of course, that means that the output current is going to be the negative of that, which is the output voltage minus V1 divided by minus J20K. But V1 is defined over there. So that means that this is equal to V output minus V1. And V1 is V out plus J2 V out. And divided by 
minus j 20k. Let me put a line here so we don't get confused. So the output voltage here cancels and a minus times this gives me a minus so that means that I out is equal to minus j2 v out divided by minus j20k. So the minus j's cancel and the 2 and the 20 becomes 1 and 10. So I output is equal to the output voltage divided by 10k. And we have the output voltage, so all we have to do is divide by 10k and of course go from volts to amps. Which means that the output current is equal to this divided by 10,000. Hmm, that's 400 nano, let's see, 10,000 goes into 4. Uh, let's see, that's 4, that would be 400 microamps, so it would be 400 times the cosine of 5000 T minus 90 degrees, and the units will be microamps. And there we go, that then gives us the output current on that particular op amp circuit. So again, what I did was I took the voltage, and divided by 10,000. 4 divided by 10,000 essentially will give us 400 microamps and the phase angle is minus 90 and the frequency is 5,000 and so that is then the answer for the output current and the answer for the output voltage. Of course we could also convert that to the sine of 5,000 T without the phase angle if you like. But that is how it's done. Why don't you just use the sine instead of the cosine? You like that better? So we can say Typically, we like to put it in the cosine format. We don't use the sine format that much. Uh, but yeah, we can simply write as four, 400 times the sine of 5000 T times microamps. So yeah, we could also put it in that format like that. All right, that is it. Now let me check to see if it's right. Did I get the same answer? Sure looks like it. Same message. All right. <laughs>